This is a series of uh, two presentations all put together in one video relating to the use of regular ex expressions and BNF. Uh, this relates to formal language from inside computers. Now we can talk about natural language. Natural language comprises of a set of words, we've got rules, we've got grammar, we've got syntax and if we put things in a particular order, in a particular way, then this is what makes language. So, such as within our natural language of English, two valid comments that fit with our grammar and our syntax and use of words, clever young students work very hard every day. This is also a valid comment, the fairly colourful peanut ate the monkey. Two invalid comments that don't follow our syntax or our grammar of our natural language are such as monkey the ate peanut colourful the fairly work students clever young every day hard very now they don't fall in with that grammar the correct syntax so we start to think of formal languages and formal languages define valid alphabets valid syntax valid words um, and we can use these rules for instance this comes into our regular expressions for indicating what is the structure of um, a postcode for instance. Now formal language is defined as an alphabet, it's defined with its rules of syntax and when we talk about the alphabet this could be equivalent to words of a natural language except within a formal language it's precisely defined as a finite set so the symbols used in that language. Now we've got the rules of syntax how do we form these strings? So an example, let's think of pencils. You can get all kinds of pencils. You can get HB, you can get 3B, 4B, 3H. You can get lots and lots. And I've just given a subset of some pencils. This isn't exhaustive. Um, but the alphabet used within pencils, H, B, 2, 3, 4. And the valid strings are a combination of some of these. A 4B, a 3B, a B, HB, H. Yep. So strings are symbolized by putting them in quotes and this is an example of having a finite number of valid strings. Often in order to represent this we use a particular type of notation, what we call as a meta language. Two notations, Bacchus Nawa form, BNF, or regular expressions. So regular expressions allow us to piece together such as a postcode, an email address, a valid web address. Um, what about defining what is a valid binary number or a string of any symbols? And here is the notation or an example of some of the notation. So this regular expression is saying that it must start with a lowercase a the brackets is what the star applies to and this is saying after a lowercase a it can be represented by zero or more occurrences of what's in that bracket a or b so a on its own a a a b a a a a a b yep so it must start with an a and have zero or more occurrences of A or B. And here is some examples of the words that can be made from that language. So in terms of regular expressions, if we have a letter on its own, that means it must consist of just that letter. It must match that. It must have A, B. A star after a particular letter or symbol means zero or more occurrences of it and if we put it in brackets it's everything in the brackets a plus there must be one or more occurrence a question mark zero or one occurrence and the pipe is an or in terms of these examples then this bit in brackets means an a or a c to start it must then have a b and it must have an A or a C to end. Now there is a finite set of possibilities with this. A, B, A, A, B, C, C, B, A, C, B, C. This star, because it's after the brackets, means zero or one or more occurrences of A, C. 
So it could be null. AC, 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 AC. This one. Don't repeat this part. Really important there. Zero more occurrences of A, followed by C. Zero or more occurrences of A, followed by C. Zero or more occurrences of A. So we've got to be careful not to, in our head, put brackets in there. This therefore gives an overview of regular expressions. Moving on to Bacchus Nauer form, it's not always possible just to use regular expressions as a way of expressing our language. Um, take for instance, if we've got brackets in there or nesting brackets inside brackets, um, trying to define something like a programming language, it becomes near enough impossible. How can we define a variable using regular expressions? And what a variable can consist of, or what an ex what a condition can consist of. So instead, we can use Bacchus Nauer form. So looking back to the one that we did when we defined lead hardness of a pencil. Now, if we use B and F, what we can actually say is lead hardness is made up consists of either HB or scale of hardness or simple hardness. These are terminal symbols of grammar, they're known, and the pipe means or. Looking at this fully, this is the BNF that represents it. So we're saying here, lead hardness is either HB or scale of hardness or simple hardness. Where scale of hardness is a numeric value followed by a simple hardness. Where the numeric values are 2 or 3 or 4, and the simple hardness is H or B. So if we want to build up scale of hardness, we need one of those, 2, 3 or 4, followed by simple hardness, H or B. This is then an example of lead hardness. Or simple hardness is simply H or B. So this is known as stating the string in the grammar. Now we have something known as a parse tree. And a parse tree shows us the route that we've gone down on using the BNF. So to start with, we've looked at that should that should uh, say over the top there, um, linking it back in with this lead hardness. Just a minor error. Okay, so that's the obviously that's instead of scale of hardness to fall in with that, that should be lead hardness. So lead hardness could either be HB, scale of hardness, or simple hardness, and that matches with this statement here. For a 4H pencil this will then go down the scale of hardness part of the tree. So a scale of hardness is numeric value followed by simple hardness. So we've got numeric value, simple hardness. The numeric value is 4. That is a valid value. And the simple hardness is H. That is also a valid value. So this shows us the parse tree of 4H. Get a blank that out there. So this is what this is showing. Now you can do a parse tree for any BNF statement. We can bring in the topic of recursion into our BNF, which makes it more powerful than regular expressions. For example, an unsigned integer could, uh, could be a digit. So it could be one of zero, one, two, three, four, all the way to nine. Or it could be a digit followed by an unsigned integer. So it could be Imagine we're looking at 435. 4 is a digit, so we send 35 back to itself. And is 35 a single digit? No, it's not. It's a digit followed by an unsigned integer. So then we take the 3, and the 5 gets sent back to it, in which case we reach our base case. What I'd like to do is produce a parse tree for 435. Pause the video and complete that. 
Now looking at BNF, BNF is used to create the syntax of a programming language. Here's an example of some of that. A statement could be an assignment statement or a for statement or an if statement, etc. Assignment statement could be an identifier followed by an assignment operator followed by an expression. And this goes on until we really break that down into what is an addition operator, a plus or a minus. What is an arithmetic operator? It's a multi operator or an add op, and so on. We can use BNF for natural language. A sentence consists of a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase followed by a noun phrase, where a noun phrase may be a preposition followed by an article followed by a noun. Adverbs slowly, quickly, linguidly. Verb, sat, lay, eat, caught, slept. Cat, mat, fire, front, mouse. So if we're looking at a valid sentence, valid sentence, we've got a proposition, an article, and a noun. So we've got the noun phrase. And we can put that together to create a sentence. The cat sat on the mat. The other thing related to BNF is a syntax diagram. So the cat caught the mouse follows this particular order. Looking at a little bit more complicated syntax diagram, imagine if this is our definition of a language. An expression is a term or an expression, followed by a plus, followed by a term. A term is a factor or a term times factor. A factor is a constant or a variable or a digit is a zero or the one or two, etc. These are syntax diagrams. So it's a more visual way of representing our BNF. So term is saying exactly the same as what this is saying. A term is a factor on its own, or a term is a term followed by a star followed by a factor. to write at the base case level it's got to start with a factor and it can have any number of them that's where our recursion comes in look there's our recursive element so the base case is we have a factor on its own and that's what we end with if we look at a factor it could be a constant or a variable or an expression so look we've got a constant or a variable or an expression with the brackets around it so these are syntax diagrams and they match with our BNF expressions. Okay, so overall, we've looked at two notations for formal languages, BNF or AND regular expressions.